Welcome to God's Handiwork, our daily devotional. Remember that you are God's handiwork, created in Jesus Christ, to do God's work, which God prepared in advance for you to do. This is Minister Alice from Dallas, Texas. Our topic today is praying strategically. The last couple of days we've been talking about how we can provoke heaven, how we can touch the heart of God, what we need to do to be able to touch the heart of God. So we're going to continue speaking about praying strategically because once you evoke and touch and provoke the heart of God, then something else needs to be done. Praying will be that other thing. So let's talk a little bit about prayer. As Christians, we've been mandated to pray. Prayer should be a lifestyle. It should be something we need to be doing every day. It's not something that we need to do when we're in a crisis, when there's an emergency, or when you're in need or in trouble. Prayer should be a daily thing. Prayer is power. That's how we touch the heart of God. When we pray, we need to have our prayers to be effective and efficient. Prayer has a signature. You can tell when someone prays and you can tell when another person does not pray. That's because you can't fake a healthy prayer life. You can't fake it. It's not something you can just say, uh, you can tell when someone has just been praying once in a while and you can tell someone who's always in the presence of God through prayer. Prayer changes things. When you keep praying, you make it a lifestyle. It changes you. You transform. And when you transform, you transform your environment. You transform everything, your family, the people you're, you're interacting with. They change because the word of God is now inside you. The Holy Spirit is inside you. More of God is in you and less of yourself. You're now living a more of a spiritual life than a physical life. And when you pray, it's like life. A Christian who does not pray is someone who is dead. You have to be spiritually alive. When you pray, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's a breath of life. And to access the throne room of heaven, that is what you need to do, is to pray. So we'll be talking about Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. While we are getting to that, I want us to also know that when the Bible says, whatever you ask of me in prayer, it shall be yours. That was when Jesus was telling his disciples, but how do you ask of the Lord if, if it's not in prayer? First, your heart has to be pure. Just recapping on what we were talking about. Your heart has to be pure. You have to be sanctified. You have to have fellowship. You have to have communion. You have to have a relationship with God in order to provoke his mind. You have to be a giver and you have to give in the right places so that you can touch the heart of God. Widows, orphans, you have to give in your church. Tithes and offerings. God is a God of principle. Remember when God says, when you Ask of me, I will give it to you. But you also have to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Remember the Lord's Prayer. For those of us who, who were praying the Lord's Prayer when we were kids, um, uh, very few churches still pray the Lord's Prayer, but I think it's important for us to also do that. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ for access. When we say, I pray this in the name of Jesus, that's because the blood of Jesus speaks for us. When you're in the altar praying through Jesus, to our Father through Jesus, you are evoking that name, the name that is above every name, the name that demons fear, the name that has power. When you're in trouble, you call on the name of Jesus and the angels come to your rescue. So we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. When you do that, you have authority. Remember when the disciples went out and they were now binding demons through the name of Jesus. And one of the demons said, we know Jesus, but who are you? Meaning that the name of Jesus has authority and we have been given that authority. 
end, when we open our mouth, that's when signs and miracles are supposed to be seen. But there's a strategy in getting to that place. You have to pray strategically. You have to pray with prayer points. You just don't go to pray to God without a plan. It's like going to war without a plan. You have to first assess the assets that you have, the resources. You have to have a plan. You have to be training. You have to be training before you go to war. It's the same thing as a believer. You have to be strategically placed. So when the devil comes to fight you, you have the words being led by the Holy Spirit. When you pray, you intercede. The Holy Spirit is our helper. That's why it's important to pray in tongues, in different tongues, because the Holy Spirit is there to help us. When we pray in tongues, it's a way of us edifying ourselves because other people don't understand what you're doing. But we're supposed to pray as a lifestyle. We're supposed to pray every day. In every situation, we're supposed to be already in prayer. And prayer can be any time. It can be any time of the day. We're not supposed to be religious. So you just have to find time to pray and to make it a lifestyle.